This is Harlem. It's a small Dutch town around a 15 minute train ride from Amsterdam. And this is Janstraat. It looks like this. But it also looks like this. And this. And like this. But let's also not forget this. So what's going on here? Let's find out together. Hey guys, my name's Stefan, and I'm an American transportation engineer, and I moved all the way to the Netherlands to work with and learn from the best transportation system on the planet. And today I'm gonna to help you unpack the mystery of Janstraat. Let's figure out what's going on here and how we can tweak the design to make this street function even better in the future. So when we're trying to figure out these kind of puzzles, Going from a bird's eye point of view is really the best perspective to see things from. So Janstraat is all about the N200 road and the center of Harlem. So the center of Harlem was pretty much begins right here. This is right in front of the Grote Kerk, the really big church in the center of Harlem. And if we go north, we can see it connects into the N200 road. The N200 road is a pretty vital route that goes all the way from Zuntfort through the northern side of Harlem, straight into the center of Amsterdam. And between these two, Janstraat is supposed to act like an access street. So it's meant to access the downtown, but also is meant to access the main train station here. So not only is it a route for cars, it's also a major a through route for bus traffic and also cyclists and pedestrians who are trying to get to the main train station to go to the rest of the Netherlands. And so what that means is that because the purpose of Janstraat is to provide access to the center of town, shops, businesses, and residential areas, this makes it fall under the Dutch travel surface category of an Erftugangsweg. I'll put that text below for you guys. And a Dutch Erftugangsweg has several specific characteristics. The first is that it's supposed to be a low-speed area, so... Car traffic inside the built-up area is never supposed to exceed 30 kilometers an hour. You will also see a mixed uh, cycle traffic and sometimes mixed pedestrian traffic, narrower street widths, and widespread use of what the Dutch call clinkers, or in the United States we often refer to these as pavers. And the good news is that for a majority of Janstraat, this is pretty much exactly what it does. It's designed very, very well. But unfortunately, there is one point where we do hit a snag. We hit this snag at the southern portion of the intersection at Parklawn Janswijk, and it continues all the way until we intersect with the N200 road here. When we hit the intersection of Parklawn and Janstraat, some really major changes happen. The first and most obvious is the change in material. We go from the clinker pattern to straight asphalt, which... Asphalt in of itself isn't a huge problem for a Erftugangsweg, but we typically only use that for routes outside of the built-up area with higher car speeds. So it's pretty unusual to see asphalt used for routes inside of the built-up area. We also see a separated bike path, which is very unusual because the whole point of a separated bike path is if the car traffic is going much faster than 30 kilometers an hour and therefore separation is necessary. We also only have a bike path in one single direction, meaning that cyclists will either have to ride unprotected on one side or they have to cycle the wrong way on the one-way cycle path. All of these things packaged together can really give the feeling that Janstra is just operating really clumsily in this space. You really don't have to wait that long on the sidewalk to watch all kinds of awkward interactions unfold in front of you. Now, an explanation for the sudden change is at Parklawn, we have our main bus route. The buses are going to be turning left and then continuing on to the train station where they then enter their parking docks. These buses can be pretty frequent. I've stood on the street and I've counted buses coming, uh, two or three of them, every single minute. The car traffic itself is actually pretty minimal because we have signs that declare that 
part of the street is restricted to cars and only buses and taxis are allowed through. In fact, there is a final street at um, Langa Hernestrat where cars are only allowed to turn left and they're not supposed to proceed through. And most of the times, cars will honor that. But even with the presence of a bus route, we have a much more fundamental issue. That Janstrat is what the Dutch call a Gijsweg in this area. And Gijsweg means gray path and means that this street has characteristics of a Ertugangsweg or an ETW. And it also has characteristics of a GOV or the Dutch word for road. And the characteristics of a street are that it has low speed limits of 30 kilometers an hour and mixed traffic is permitted. But it also has characteristics of a road, meaning that it has a higher intensity of bus traffic that in reality moves quicker and bicycle paths were introduced to try to get the cyclists out of the way. And these gray paths are dangerous because they combine speed and complexity. And the Dutch have actually made it a requirement that all existing gray paths must be converted into either an ETW or a GOW. And when it comes to deciding what Janstraat will become, we're really going to be limited by the space available and also the context of what Janstraat connects to. From a bird's eye point of view, converting Janstraat to a GOV really doesn't make a lot of sense for a couple reasons. The first is that vehicular traffic cars already are not allowed to access the N200 by driving next to the train station. It's already blocked. And the second reason is that the majority of Janstraat is already designed like an ATV, and it doesn't make sense to just have a very short section redesigned into a GOV or a road when cars really aren't supposed to be using it to begin with. And the second problem just comes down to space. So if we measure the existing width of Janstraat, including the bicycle path, we get around nine and a half meters of width. <clears throat> and that's a pretty big problem because if each lane in Janstraat is gonna be three and a half meters, that gives us seven, and maybe two, two and a half meters left for everything else. And we need at least four to four and a half meters for two directional cycling. And a requirement of a GOW, of a road, is that cyclists are separated with enough space. It's not voluntary. So because we don't have the space necessary to make a safe GOW, we are forced to choose an ETW. So looking into the future, what could our stretch of Janstraat look like as an ETW? Well, here's one idea. This is von Berkelstraat in this town of Den Bosch, and it had a similar problem to Janstraat, and it was recently redesigned as a cycle street where cyclists, mopeds, and only public buses are allowed on this stretch. The whole project, not including the sidewalk, is around eight and a half to nine meters wide, meaning it would already fit perfectly inside the current width of Janstraat. Now, it might seem a bit backwards to you guys because in this setup, the cyclist would be losing a separated bike path. But what we're getting in exchange is a safe and convenient correction in both directions around the Harlem station. And the narrower lane widths will actually slow down the bus traffic enough where the sharing the space is actually a lot more comfortable than it currently is. And because we're interested in sustainable safety, we actually do want to come up with something that will slow down the buses a little bit because right now they are driving a little too fast. This is just one potential solution and there's many more out there. If you guys have a couple, I would love to read about them in the comments below. I really love making these kinds of videos and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like, comment, and a subscribe. Until next time, this is Stefan with Build the Lanes.